Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome back to my Modern C++ series. In today's episode, we're going to continue talking about ranges, this time looking at just the composability of some of the range functions, things like transform and drop while. They're nice functions to go ahead and play around with as we're learning things. And we're actually going to be looking at the views and how we use them in loops. So we'll get a little bit of a review of the things we've been talking about last time. So if you didn't see the previous videos on ranges or aren't familiar with concepts, those might be nice things to take a look at. But again, we'll cover most of that in this video if you need a review. Otherwise, so anyways, let's go ahead and take a look here at the ranges library here. And we're going to go ahead and scroll down here. We're going to see a bunch of different topics. We're going to continue looking at some of these things, the range concepts, the things that need to be enforced for our ranges. Uh, of course, we're going to be looking at views today. And uh, today we'll look at the range adapters, which are things like transform, which I'll go ahead and open up. And let's go ahead and take a look at drop while. That's another nice one to take a look at here. And if you're not familiar with transform, basically that's a view of a sequence that applies a transformation function to each element. And drop while, the basic idea is it's a view consisting of uh, let's see, elements of another view, skipping the initial subsequence of elements until the first element where the predicate returns false. So we're just going to keep dropping or removing things. So this is a way of filtering out some data so that we can then look at the stuff that we care about. So again, we can compose these in different orders or play around with them. Again, this is the power of ranges. So let's go ahead and look at transform first and foremost. So Whenever you look at these pages, you're going to see a lot of, uh, you know, template stuff, especially in the range uh, views, the range, uh, you know, functions here. Uh, what I really care about today is the call signature. So you can actually just do a search for uh, transform here. And we can actually, you know, just to eliminate some of the details here, look at how we have a transform and it takes a function as input. This is const expert. Um, and uh, we have another version here, which has a uh, range as the input here, and then the uh, function call here. Okay, so that's that's the basic idea of what we want to look at. And these are since C plus plus twenty, and then you've got the other stuff here. So as C plus plus evolves, as you get to twenty three, twenty six, and so on. Uh, ranges are going to become more powerful and have more functionality. Okay, and again, the way to decipher these is sort of take a look at the template, um, and we'll look at these details when relevant um, in these videos. But again, I just want to do a basic usage here, and then you have the concepts here, which again are the things that are being modeled, um, and you can see a list of these uh, in a moment here for all of our ranges here. That basically down here, uh, tr the transform view models concepts like uh, is our uh, thing that we're looking at modeling a random access range, bidirectional range, forward range, input range, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, so those are the things that need to be modeled um, and are in the requires clause. You can look in your standard library if you find that useful. But again, usually it's in the documentation on CPP reference somewhere. Now, the other tip I'll give before we go ahead and just dive into transform is most of these range functions, again, are very similar to the ones found in standard algorithms. So if this is too much sort of line noise for you, you can go practice with those and then take a look at the range based one and say, oh, OK, I know what that does. OK. So this is sort of the one that we'll look at for the composability. This is the one if you're just calling transform on some range and want to uh, maybe treat it as a you know run through an algorithm, and then be, you'd use something like ranges two to actually generate the final set. So we'll we'll loop in a few things here. Um, so anyways, there's a bunch of stuff that we can do with these uh, range uh, adapters, which turn things into views, as we talked about last time, so I can lazily iterate through them. Uh, and you can you know, get the beginning and ending iterator, figure out the size, uh, you know, some of these other things that are interesting, the front or the back of the range. Again, they're all handy things. But I want to go ahead and just start by looking at this example here, where uh, basically we've got this function that's going to uh, looks like show uh, each of the characters here. Uh, so it looks like I've got an input string here, CPP reference, and for each of the characters, okay, I want to print them out. And then for this one, I'll say for each of the characters, I'm going to then transform and do some rotation here, I guess by 13. That looks like what uh, rotation is doing, uh, which looks like it's doing some sort of cipher here. Uh, and then you get, end up with this string here, okay? Here's another version where I want to generate that uh, string here, right? Uh, this one's just calling... Uh, the, the put function here. But this time I'm doing ranges copy, which we haven't talked about, taking in the uh, transform, rotating the characters, and then doing this uh, back inserter, which is basically just 
sending things as an output range here into some storage here, okay? Something that we can keep here. We could also use something like ranges too, which we looked at uh, in the previous episode. So these are some of the basic ideas, but the thing that I wanna take a look at here is transform uh, can be a handy example. So I'll leave this to the side here and I've got a little example for us. So I've got vector, which we can see here, print. So I'm using C++ 23. You can use C out if you want. Uh, and then of course ranges, uh, which let me scroll up, right? We always bring in the header file, otherwise that we need uh, in, in these examples. So let's go ahead and get into it here. And I'll use a range based for loop here. And let's just start with something simple here. Uh, so again, for each of our elements in our range, let's just go ahead and print uh, them out here. Uh, I'm just gonna do print here and then I'll add a space in between. And then let's just do a print line at the end. Uh, and we know that's working already. So uh, let's just go ahead and do this just to make sure that our program is working. Uh, here is the full compilation statement. Nothing too crazy, but I do need 23, uh, C++ 23 because I'm using print here. Uh, so we can see this is working just the same here. Now, the, the thing that I'm gonna do here that's interesting is I'm going to uh, go ahead and add in our transform. So that's coming from standard uh, views. Okay, so uh, the standard library views and transform. And uh, what's transform need? Uh, well, it needs some function. Okay, so let's look at one of the signatures here, for instance. And let's go ahead and pass in some Lambda function. Now, again, I could define that Lambda function here and do something. Um, I mean, let's just do it for the sake of, you know, showing you how this is done here. Uh, let's just say I have some elements here and I will just return uh, element times two. Let's go ahead and run that. Hopefully got to make sure, uh, let me make sure my indentation is uh, looking uh, a little bit wild here. Oh, I got to close a parenthesis. There we go classic uh, error here, but it's compiling. And like that, you can see that we are doubling things. Now, this is probably hard to read here. I'm not gonna fumble with this too much here. Let's just write a little Lambda function here. Uh, we use auto, let's just call it uh, double value. And uh, I'll just effectively take this same function here, uh, our Lambda function, and let's just go ahead and uh, print it out here. Uh, or sorry, let's just, uh, not print it out, let's just make it a little bit more easy to read here in our code here, okay? And this will make our range-based loop look a lot nicer. So the transform that we're doing is just doubling the value, okay? So you can see there is one call of it here. And just to make it a little bit more interesting, let's go ahead and do this twice here, okay? Just so you can see what's going on here. Double the value again, okay? Because we can compose things uh, as we've previously talked about here. Oh, let's see about, uh, what did I mess up here? One more. Uh, let's actually see what the errors are that it's giving us. Let's see the full error. Let me rerun that again. Uh, okay, error expected here. Standard views transform. Uh, what did I want here? Oh, I must have missed my uh, parenthesis ending the for loop here. Um, so this is one area where I have sort of changed my style of how I indent things when I am composing. So, you know, do something that looks reasonable. Uh, but anyways, this looks like it's working. So now we're getting our values doubled and doubled and doubled and so on. So uh, now as promised, let's take a look at some other function here. Drop while, I'll make this a little bit larger here just so we can see. Uh, again, let's use the same technique. Let's see if we learn something. I see a bunch of noise here. Let's just go down to the call signature so we can at least start with this and I see uh, it looks like two versions here because I've got this version and this version. So again, the hints being that drop while is something that takes a predicate. And basically uh, every time this passes, we just drop that value as we're looking at it. Because again, remember range is looking at things one at a time um, as we're sort of processing things in our for loop. I mean, this, this isn't super strange whenever we have a for loop, right? We are just sort of processing things usually one element at a time. Parallel programming is a different story, <laughs> but um, anyways, so let's let's define some predicates and this can be a way to filter out some things. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, play with this here. And let's just, let's just drop while the value is less than two. Okay, so let's just uh, write that predicate, uh, less than 
two. That'll be my function here. Uh, and then we'll again just take in the element and I'll just return if the element is less than two and hopefully spell return right. There we go. Okay, so let me make sure, oh, I messed a semicolon. All right, so this is working. It should be working or should be compiling rather, but we're not using it. And again, let, let's play with this. So um, let's go ahead and let's drop this down here. And let's drop our elements first and foremost, right? Drop while uh, less than two, that's gonna be our predicate. So we should, uh, from this run, right, filter out all these values. Because the very first thing that's gonna run and say, hey, uh, I'm gonna drop these one, 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 one here, and then these are greater, and then those will go through the doubling, right? So I shouldn't see this many values here, okay? I'm gonna try not to make any compilation errors, hopefully, <laughs> so we can see this run a few different times here. Uh, oh, and of course I messed it up uh, with the function name here. Uh, that's okay here, let's uh, do this. Famous last words, don't say you're gonna mess something up. Uh, but anyways, uh, let's go ahead and here, let's run the last one that was working just so we can have our reference. Uh, the new version with drop while, the function that we're looking at, and you should be able to see, again, we chopped off that first bit here. And again, the important part being, we didn't really do any computation on these first values in our range here, other than the test here, right? We didn't have to go to the next stages here, so we don't waste any work here. Again, this is kind of the idea. Uh, now, the little uh, thing that I wanna do here is again, just to uh, play around with this, is let's reverse the order. Okay, so try putting it at the very end. Let's recompile and rerun it. And this time, right, we're doubling all of our elements first and then doing our test, okay? Now again, this is obvious stuff here <laughs> when you sort of think about it, but I think it's just important to emphasize that like the order of the operations or as you arrange some of these things when you're doing your composition uh, matters. So again, that's kind of the one of the ideas of this video. But again, very easy to use, transform, uh, drop while, uh, which I believe is a new thing, something I don't know if it's an actually algorithm here, uh, but we'll go ahead and start wrapping up this video here. Let me actually go ahead and see an algorithm just so we can get a little bit of a comparison here. Uh, was drop while, yeah, I don't think it was here. I think it's just a, uh, we have a bunch of these functions here like drop and take and, and some new things. So again, one of the beauties of looking at ranges is going to be exposure to these new sort of algorithm building blocks, which is super, super cool. Other languages have these, uh, D language has some of these like drop and take and so on. Um, so I think you'll find some goodies in the uh, ranges library to say. Uh, but that goes to my other tip, uh, which I might've mentioned, or maybe uh, even um, last few minutes here is if, if there's too much noise in these uh, ranges functions, right? If there is an equivalent one like transform here, uh, go ahead into, transform in the algorithm, which is the stuff that's been around since like C++ 98, and see if, you know, this is more reasonable for you to understand. I mean, again, these functions are a little bit beefier because you have to pass in the input uh, iterators and so on, and, and you can have the outputs and so on. But again, it might be helpful or if the description of the algorithm or even some of the examples here uh, make more sense to you, you can try these out. And again, another little pro tip, if you're trying to practice, you could try taking, you know, the bodies of some of these algorithms, uh, with the algorithm, uh, library and translate them to the ranges version. Again, just a tip for practice. You know, folks are always asking about different ways they can practice learning some of these new things. That could be one thing that's a little bit mechanical, but you know, sometimes there's fun, uh, or different examples. Uh, again, in this case, there is a little like Caesar cipher example or, um, some sort some sort of interesting, uh, algorithm here. Uh, for, for translating the text. But anyways, uh, hopefully that gives you an idea of transform and drop while. Um, and again, this is just fun stuff playing around with these algorithms. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the order of the computation as I would like it to do, right? I would like to filter before I do the transformation, um, usually when I do some algorithm or I'm processing some data. So anyways, there you have it here. So there you have it, folks. Hopefully you enjoyed this lesson. As always, check out courses.mshot.io. I got a bunch of stuff here. Uh, let me go ahead and scroll out here a little bit here. You can follow along these C++ lessons if you're enjoying this series and keep track of your progress there if you find that environment useful or join the community forum. And I'll look forward to otherwise seeing you in the next video, folks. Thanks for your time and attention and see you soon.